the 80s turned into the 90s, well, let's just say the decade of the 90s was, it had a bit of an uphill journey. The 80s were loaded with horror gems, both large and small, that the 90s pretty much, like, they were at a disadvantage from the jump. But I think that the 90s are a generally underappreciated decade of horror. And that goes double for movies like In the Mouth of Madness, directed by John Carpenter, like Halloween, Big Trouble in Little China, that John Carpenter. It was basically his big homage to the works of H.P. Lovecraft. If you have ever seen Cthulhu, you know who H.P. Lovecraft is. It tells the story of John Trent, played by Sam Neill. He plays an insurance agent who works for a very big book publishing firm. Their biggest author in terms of revenue is named Sutter Kane, and he has disappeared. And so it is up to Trent and one of the publishers who works there to try and find him because he makes the company a lot of money. And, well, down the rabbit hole they go, and they don't come out the same. Let's just say that. Sam Neill is low-key an excellent actor, whether it's Jurassic Park or Peaky Blinders. Whenever he shows up in something, I automatically just say to myself, that dude's awesome. And that goes double for In the Mouth of Madness. He's a very bitter person, but that could have been a complete turnoff, but Sam Neill has enough charisma to make it work. He is an immediate detractor from the start. He doesn't believe in anything mystical or meaningful. He just says... This Sutter Kane guy is a nut, but nuts eventually have to come up for air, so we're going to find him. And well, let's just say he ends up losing his sanity along the way. The first scene that we see this character, he is being carted into a mental hospital, which, by the way, is staffed by John Glover, the same John Glover who is Lionel Luther in Smallville. I had to look it up. It's the same actor. And then the literally the next scene, Sam Neill basically gets into some creative art. All over his face, all over the padded cell he now lives. It's a brutal transition. This movie low-key kind of reminded me of The Shining, in that the movie doesn't really give easy answers as to whether or not John Trent is actually insane. I mean, clearly he has lost, a, he has definitely lost his mind. But was it because of Sutter Kane? Because it is heavily implied that Sutter Kane and his books have some kind of influence over, over his readers. Or was John Trent just waiting for an excuse to finally just lose the plot? The movie doesn't really give any easy answers, and I do appreciate that. About 10 minutes in, I said to myself, well, clearly John Carpenter has read more than one Stephen King book in his life. And then they actually reference Stephen King, like Stephen King exists in this universe. So yeah, clearly the Stephen King influence is there. I know it's a Lovecraft homage, but this definitely screams something that Stephen King would have had some influence over, even though he had nothing to do with this movie. The ending of this movie is wild too. Basically, the apocalypse happens, and it reminds me heavily of the premiere of The Walking Dead, where Rick Grimes wakes up in the empty hospital and he has to figure out what all happened. Sam Neill pretty much has to do that, except with seemingly no zombies. And the ending of the movie sees him going to a movie theater and watching the movie that we just watched, which was also somehow directed by John Carpenter. It's kind of fun, but I'm all, it's a weird feeling to be fun, to be having fun, but also being confused. But that's what I experienced. The long story short is that In the Mouth of Madness is mad underrated. I cannot recommend it enough. Do yourself a favor and watch it.